Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day here in England and I'm here to talk to you today about PRS guitars, specifically wood libraries and specifically ten tops. So I have here in my hands a beautiful McCarty single cut 594. It's a wood library model and it also has a nice quilted maple ten top. Um, first things first, we need to talk about maple. So there's two species of maple used by PRS in guitars. The first is Eastern maple or hard rock maple. That's used on the S2 lines, most CEs and the old McCarty model. Um, ten tops are almost always the other species of maple, which is Western maple or soft maple. Um, for example, Western maple is the only species that will ever contain quilt um, and in Paul's words it's more pretty. Uh, now that's not derogatory in any way, that's totally subjective, that's Paul's opinion. I've seen some stunning CEs and some stunning old McCartys. Um, however the tone buffs out there might say that hard rock maple or eastern maple sounds better. Um, it was certainly the species used on the old Gibsons from the golden era and it's why it was chosen for the original McCarty model um, for those tonal properties. So, first things first, ten tops. Um, the rumour that just won't go away is that a ten top is the top 10% of maple that comes into the PRS factory. That's never been the case, it's not true, it's an urban myth that sounds feasible, which is probably why it's hung around for as long as it has, but it's not true. Um, PRS's own definition of a ten top is a piece of maple that shows uniform and consistent figuring across the top with no dead spots. Um, there's plenty of evidence out there that suggests the top 10% thing is pure fabrication. So if we look back at the model history a little bit, um, PRS was founded, PRS proper was founded in 1985. Almost straight away, a colleague of PRS said, you've got some really pretty guitars coming out of here. You're not charging enough for those exceptional ones. So in 1986, the signature line was born. Um, those signature guitars used exceptional maple tops. Um, and if you can find one, they are absolutely stunningly beautiful guitars. However, there was still a gap. You had the run-of-the-mill tops, at, you know, the PRS Custom, and then you had the PRS Signature line way up top. So in 1987, Ten Top was founded as an option, which sat somewhere in the middle. So straight away, that top 10% thing just doesn't work. It's the definition, which shows says nothing about intensity of figuring, it's only about the consistency of figuring on a top. So if we take a look at some examples here, the first one we're going to look at is a regular core guitar. Um, as you can see there is some spectacular figuring on this, but there's a couple of dead spots. I'm, th I'm thinking on the lower horn and on the treble side just above the pickup ring, you can see a couple of bare patches. And despite being a really beautiful top full of character, it doesn't fit that 10 top definition. Now if we look at this one, 10 top, consistent figuring across most of the top. However, there is a bit of a dead spot, in my opinion, just behind the bridge here. And the reason for that is, Ten tops are graded before they're carved and before they're painted. So when this was a blank in the factory, before it was a guitar, I just sprayed the piece of maple with water to bring the figuring out. 
And at the morning meeting where they grade the tops, they would have said, that's a 10 top. However, when they've done the violin carve here behind the bridge, it's just exposed a little bit of a, a dead spot. Now, I don't mind that. I think it's still a beautiful top. And it's quite common in 10 tops to see perhaps that little dead spot. And that's why they're graded before they're carved. In some exceptional circumstances, a, a guitar may be then downgraded or it may be upgraded, but mostly they stick with that original decision. So if we look at another 10 top here, again, you can see just how uniform, just how consistent the grain is, uh, the figuring is across the entire top. You may have noticed there, I'll try and slip past it. I made a common mistake. Grain and figuring are uh, actually different things. Um, quilt maple, flamed maple, what people are talking about is the figuring. You can often see, if you look closely, the grain running perpendicularly to the figuring. So if the quilt on this one's going that way, if you look really closely on your own guitar, you won't see it on the video, you can just see the grain behind the figuring going at 90 degrees. Um, minus DKP for me there. So the next one we're going to look at is an artist grade. Now, earlier in the video, I said Signature Line was introduced in 1986. That ran until 1990. In 1991, the Artist One series replaced the Signature Line. So it was still that exceptional maple. Um, they just called it the Artist instead of the Signature. That ran until 1993, where it was split into two lines. The Artist Two was released in 94 as well as the artist package of upgrade options. So you could order a regular PRS custom but with an artist package attached to it. So that would give you the, the exceptional maple top that you found on the artist series guitars. And that art, artist package of options still exists today. Um, it's a significant upcharge over a regular core model, but you get a few other goodies thrown in as well as the exceptional maple top. So fast forward another couple of years to 1996 and private stock was introduced. Now private stock grade tops, as we'll see here, are the stuff that make your jaw hit the floor. It's the best of the best and it carries a significant upcharge accordingly. Um, but absolutely stunningly, breathtakingly beautiful maple. Um, so those are the four grades. You've got regular core, as it's now known. You've got 10 top, which is second in the chain of command. You've got artist package, which is the third highest tier. And then right at the top of the tree, pardon the pun, you've got the private stock grade. So the second thing was wood library. Now, you might have noticed when I was talking about those four grades, I didn't mention wood library. So the second myth that just won't go away is that wood library is its own grain of wood. It's not. Wood library maple is graded in exactly the same way as maple for the production line guitars. So you've got core tops, you've got ten tops, you've got artist tops, you've got private stock tops. What wood library is is an a la carte menu of woods in the Wood Library Vault where dealers can commission runs using combinations of timbers that wouldn't normally be available from a production line guitar. So, for example, you could have a custom 24 that you could spec a black limber back, you could spec a quilt maple top, you could spec a solid ebony neck and a Brazilian rosewood fingerboard. Norm Before Wood Library was founded, the only way to have been able to get a combination like that would have been to go through private stock. With Wood Library, dealers can spec sets of a minimum of 10 guitars, and as long as it's based on an existing model, they can pretty much do what they want. If you want to mix and match features from different models, you still need to go private stock. 
So again, looking at this one, it's a ten top as I've already said. It's got a solid East Indian rosewood neck and fingerboard. Now from the production line, you wouldn't be able to get a ten top with a solid rosewood neck, but it is possible with wood library. Just on the screen here, we've got a couple of other wood library guitars, just to show that some of the poss possibilities that can be ordered. And officially, there's a train of thought that even though the maple tops are graded in the same way as the production line guitars, they might use the slightly more pretty end of the scale. So for a quilted ten top, this is a good one. It's probably verging on artist grade. But PRS will neither confirm nor deny that. Um, although it makes a lot of sense, it's very feasible. And a lot of the wood libraries I've seen in the flesh, they're punching above their, their nominated class. Um, so that's that. Any questions? You can get hold of me on the PRS Guitar Owners Worldwide group on Facebook or you can leave them in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video please like, share, subscribe. If you've really enjoyed the video please visit my tip jar on www.guitargo.co.uk forward slash album project and there's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.